Right, so this is the chapter 16, oxidation and reductions. We're going to learn some of those uh, reactions that can be used uh, in some of those uh, technologies. One of them will be the fuel cells. So this is uh, based on the tendency of some element uh, gain electrons and other element to lose electrons. The most common type of fuel cell is the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. It's based on the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. So in this reaction, hydrogen and oxygen form the covalent bonds with one another. A single covalent bond is a shared electron pair. Since oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, the electron pair in the hydrogen oxygen bond is unevenly shared, with oxygen getting the larger portion. In effect, oxygen has more electron in H2O than the elemental O2. It has gained the electron in this uh, reaction. Uh, so therefore, in a typical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen atoms gain the electrons directly from hydrogen atoms as the reaction proceeds. In a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, the oxygen and the hydrogen are separated, forcing the electrons to move through an external wire to get from hydrogen to oxygen. Uh, this uh, moving electron constitutes an electrical current, which is used to power the electrical motor of a fuel cell vehicle, for example. Uh, fuel cells use the electron gaining tendency of oxygen and the electron losing tendency of uh, hydrogen to force electrons to move through a wire, creating the electricity that powers the car. The definition of oxidation. One definition of oxidation, though not the most fundamental one, is simply the gain, gaining of oxygen. Uh, so through oxidation, for example, is the rusting, process of some metals, rust is produced by the oxidation, oxidation of RN or Fe. Uh, here the picture shows the rusting of uh, some of those metal RN. Uh, rapid oxidation, uh, the flame from the oxidation of carbon in natural gas, uh, when you light up or burning the natural gas, so that is the uh, very rapid oxidation. A fundamental definition of oxidation is the loss of electrons, and a fundamental definition of reduction is the gain of electrons. Notice that oxidation and the reduction must occur together. In, uh, if one substance loses electron being oxidi uh, oxidized or oxidation, then another substance must gain electrons uh, reduction or being reduced. There are also these two concepts, the reducing agent and oxidizing agent. Uh, here is the reaction between H2 or hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to produce uh, water. Uh, so in this process, uh, we see uh, because hydrogen is uh, oxidized, so we see hydrogen is the reducing agent. And uh, oxygen is reduced, so therefore we see oxygen is the oxidizing agent. Um, consider our hydrogen uh, oxygen fuel cell reaction. Uh, hydrogen is oxidized, making it the reducing agent. Uh, substances such, such as hydrogen, which have a strong tendency to give up electron, are good reducing agent. They tend to cause the reduction of other substances. Oxygen is reduced, making it the oxidizing agent. Uh, some substances such as oxygen, uh, which have a strong tendency to attract electrons, are good oxidizing agent. They tend to cause the oxidation of uh, other substances. 
a helpful uh, mnemonic for memorize oxidation reduction. Uh, one of them is uh, all your reg. O oxidation is the loss of electrons. So that means uh, O I L. Uh, reduction is the gain of electrons. So we just using the first letter of each word, R I G. Um, there's some other one. Another one is the uh, Leo the line says the gear uh, loss electrons uh, oxidation. Uh, gain electrons reduction. To summarize, uh, oxidation is the, the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. Oxidizing agent is the substances being reduced. Reducing agent is the substances being oxidized. Uh, there's a more general way to identify oxidation reduction is using the oxidation state. In order to identify oxidation and reduction, chemistry has devised a scheme of oxidation state to checking electrons in chemical reactions. In this scheme, which is like a bookkeeping of electrons, all shared electrons are assigned to the most electronegative element. Uh, then a number called the oxidation state or the oxidation number the computed for each element based on the number of electrons assigned to, to them in the structure. Uh, do not confuse oxidation with ionic charge. Sometimes they will be same, but sometimes we don't have an ionic charge for some element. So substance need not to be ionic to have the an assigned oxidation state. The easiest way to assign oxidation states is to follow the rules for assigning oxidation states. Uh, there are five rules, rule one, two, three, four, five, are higher hierarchical. If any rules conf conflict, follow the rule that is higher on, on the list. Well, the higher means uh, the number is smaller. So the rule one has the highest priority. Uh, rule one is uh, referring to the free element. It uh, says uh, the oxidation state of an atom in a free element is zero. Uh, so later I will see the examples, what do you mean by the free element? Uh, the second rule has the second priority. So the oxidation state uh, of a monatomic ion equal to its charge. Uh, rule number three is the sum of the oxidation state of all atoms in a neutral compound equal to zero in a polyatomic ion equal to the charge of the ion. Uh, rule number four is uh, helping the rule number three. So rule number four has uh, kind of two parts. Part one is the group one metal have an oxidation state of plus one. Group two A metal have an oxidation state of plus two. Group one, group two metal, which means uh, in the periodic table, the leftmost column except the hydrogen will be the group one metal. The group two metal will be the second leftmost uh, column. Uh, so then we also need this uh, last rule has the lowest priority. Uh, so in their uh, compound, uh, non metal are assigned the oxidation states according to their uh, hierarchical table uh, in this table here on the right. Uh, the entrance at the top of the table have the priority over the entrance at the bottom. So therefore, if you have to use this rule five, uh, then the highest priority will be the fluorine. Fluorine has the netting one, then hydrogen plus one, and so on. So now let's practice uh, this uh, five rule, then we will see some of those definition. We'll talk about the three elements. Uh, so the first question is, uh, what will be the oxidation state for Br in the Br2? Uh, so we know there are two Br atoms in this Br molecular, uh, but uh, in this Br2, you will see the, is, uh, the Br is the free element. Uh, so therefore, the oxidation state using the rule number one uh, for both Br atom is zero. 
so the second question is uh, the R station state for this uh, K1 plus I. Uh, so here I just want to show you clearly. Uh, the first question is about BR2. There are two BR, then both of them has this number zero. Uh, so the second question is the K uh, one plus I young. So therefore the number or the R division number, uh, whatever the R division state will be the same as the charge plus one will be plus one. Um, then this three is uh, not a free element, it's a compound. Uh, so therefore, we cannot use rule one, not rule three, to get the answer. We have to go to rule three. So rule three just tell you uh, all the RCD number adding together uh, should equal to something. If uh, something, um, if if you are uh, the the question is about a, a neutral compound, so you are adding all the number together equals zero. So therefore, we can see uh, first we'll give Li uh, plus one, then, uh, then the following will be negative one. Uh, so the D is similar as C. Uh, we cannot uh, get answer from one, rule one, rule two. We starting with rule three. Uh, we see this is a neutral compound. So therefore, uh, the, the R state number for carbon and then plus uh, two times the RCD number for each oxygen will be zero. Uh, so therefore we write something like this. C RCD state plus two times RCD state of oxygen equal to zero. And obviously in this equation, we, we, we have two unknown. We don't know what is the, this, what is that. So we have to go to the rule five. Uh, so this rule five will give you some of those uh, numbers and then uh, so this negative two is from that uh, rule uh, number five we saw on last slide. Uh, once we get a one answer, so we substitute that answer for that uh, question, then we come back to this equation, and then we solve the equation for the other unknown. So this uh, the other unknown. Uh, so therefore, that's how we solve the problem like that. And uh, you can see this is a simple equation. Uh, so therefore we can uh, get uh, the carbon ox state equal to positive four. Uh, you can just um, indicate the answer like a, a nearby those uh, element. Uh, make sure those uh, number is for every one atom. Okay, so when you see this, Plus four negative two. Uh, so the number or the arc number is for uh, each one, uh, each one atom. Uh, so then the fifth question in this practice is the um, SO4 two negative. Uh, so this again, we cannot get any answer using the rule one, rule two. So the first two rule one and two uh, do not give any answer because that does not apply. It's not a free element, it's not monatomic ion. Uh, then we will see we have one sulfur, so therefore uh, kind of one sulfur here. Uh, so therefore we see one time uh, the S ox state uh, plus four, so this four comes from this four here. Uh, equal to negative two, negative two come from this negative two. Um, again, there are two unknown, so we don't know uh, what is the arc state of uh, sulfur, and we don't know what is the arc state of oxygen. Um, then we continue with, with other rules, so rule, rule four, no answer, no help. Uh, then rule five, we will get O in the negative two. Then we will come back, uh, put a negative two uh, in this equation we get uh, from, uh, sorry, where are we? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I. 
clean on something, then lost uh, lost our uh, last slide. But anyhow, we get here. So, uh, we have this equation, and we said we have to use uh, one other rule to get the one of those unknown. So this now this negative two is for this number. And we get this is from uh, that uh, rule, rule five. So then we put it back into this equation and uh, now we only have one unknown. Uh, we are solving this, uh, the only unknown now. So therefore we get a positive six. And then you summarize, you just use one number for so far, and then this is for each, for each one of. Okay, so the last one is N202. You have to be very careful, otherwise you will make some common mistake. Uh, so again, we will set up this equation and this equation is from rule three. Now, commonly in the last few examples, you see oxygen, so negative two, but not in this one. Okay. Uh, so in this one, you go by the priority. So you get this plus one for sodium first, uh, because this comes from rule four. Rule four has the higher priority. Than, than rule five. So therefore, even rule five will tell you oxygen will be negative two, but before you get that, you already get some answer for, from rule four. Rule four is kind of uh, dominate or higher priority. So therefore you will use plus one for, for sodium and put it here. You solve this equation, see what will be the uh, O ox state, and it turned out to be negative one. So it's not a common. All right, so those are the few practice questions to learn how to use the rule to sign the oxidation state for the atoms. And once we have that, and in this example, the using oxidation state to identify the element that is being oxidized and the element that has been reduced in this reaction. Uh, now, these uh, two sentences in red is, um, is kind of a, uh, you want to memorize to using the oxidation state to tell whether they are oxidized or reduced or nothing happened. So once you have this um, number, and I just compare the number for the element before the reaction of the reaction. All right, so for the, this uh, few elements in this reaction, we just go by the rule again. So the first one is the calcium uh, solid, which is the free element. So therefore, zero oxidation state for each atom. And then in this water, uh, for H will be plus one, for O is negative two. In this calcium hydroxide, calcium become plus two, and arsenic still negative two, and, and here the hydrogen still plus one. But not in this H2. H2 is a, a free element of hydrogen, so therefore it's zero. Now you see, uh, for two elements, uh, somewhere the number change. Calcium change from zero to plus two. So the number increases. And then you can see here, if the number increases, the element is being oxidized. So therefore we can see calcium increase in oxidation states, so it was oxidized. Uh, so some of those H nothing happened, oxygen nothing, nothing happened to oxygen, negative two, negative two. Uh, in some of the hydrogen, like plus one, plus one, but some of them change. Uh, so therefore we can see some of the uh, hydrogen uh, decreased in oxygen state, decrease, you know, the we mean like a decrease is that you change from plus two to a uh, plus one to zero to so decrease. So we can see uh, some of the hydrogen has been reduced. Uh, you can use 
this uh, artificial technique uh, to balance equation. Redux reaction occurs in aqueous solution are usually difficult to balance by infection and uh, or, or trial and errors. It requires a special procedure called the half reaction method of balance. In this procedure, the OR equation is broken down into two half reactions, one for oxidation, one for reduction. Then you, the half reactions are balanced individually, then added together. Uh, so you first assign the oxidation number to all the atoms to determine what is being oxidized, what is being reduced. For example, Al solid plus uh, silver plus ion produce uh, Al3 plus ion and silver solid. Uh, we assign the numbers of zero for free element and plus one is same as the charge, plus three is same as the charge, zero for free element. Uh, then we can see the oxidation happen to the aluminum or Al, reduction happen to silver. Uh, so therefore we can write uh, this equation into two equations. And one will be the oxidation for aluminum. Uh, the other one is the reduction for silver. Uh, then we will balance both of them separately and put them together in the last step. Uh, in this case, the half reaction are already balanced uh, with respect to the atom, but uh, the charge is not. So therefore, we will balance the charge uh, by using electron. This is the procedure, so you have to follow the procedure. Uh, when you balance the atom, we will have the procedure. It, it, here, because the atom is balanced, so we'll ban balance the charge by using electron. Um, you just identify uh, on the left, zero charge on the right, before we put the electron in there are three plus, we will use three electron because one electron is negative one. So three negative one and three plus one, that's also zero. Uh, so for the other reaction, the reduction reaction, we were adding electron on the left. Before adding electron on the left, we have one plus. After we adding electron on the left, so that becomes zero. One plus one minus becomes zero. That is good because on the right, you also have zero charge. So now we are almost ready to put them together. Uh, before we put them together, make sure both uh, two equations have the same number of electrons. So now, right now, these are not. This first reaction has three electrons, the second reaction has one electron. What you do, you will multiply some common number, make them have the same number of electrons. Uh, so clearly, you will have a three and a one, you multiply the one by three. So therefore, we multiply the second equation by three, and uh, we will have this new equation, uh, a new equation too. Now we can add them together. Okay, so now we copy here. We have two equations. Uh, both of them has a three electron. And then you just add them together. What happens is the electron cancel out. Uh, then this is the level over of the reactant. This is the level over of the product. So therefore, our overall equation will be AL, uh, plus three AG one plus produce AL three plus plus three AG solid. Uh, to verify the equation of balance, you can just do a check. Uh, check how many atoms, uh, how many charge. So this will be both. Should be everything should be balanced. The AL balance one AL one AL. Uh, the AG is balanced three AG three AG. The charge so like plus three. I well, have the plus one, plus one times three is plus three. And here just one of the three plus, so therefore one times three is three plus. Uh, notice that the charge needs not to be zero on both sides of the equation. It just has to be equal on both sides. So therefore the equation is balanced. And uh, here is the rule to balance some other equations, uh, depend on uh, your question, maybe some of them is similar like what we saw the last uh, example. Some of them may be very tedious. Uh, also depend on whether our reaction is in acidic solution or in basic solution. And this procedure is uh, for uh, the reaction happening in acidic solution. If it's happening in basic solution, here you just adding one more step in this step three. Um, so let's do one example. Uh, to balance the equation in a static solution. So I have this equation, we want to balance it. You can try and, and, and so on, but not easy. 
uh, so therefore we are using this uh, method in this cavity. Uh, we first will separate this equation into two equations. One will be the reduction, one the oxidation. You can do that uh, very quick by using the arc number. Uh, so this I1 negative just negative one because it's a monatomic ion. For this one, you had used what we talked about using the equations. Uh, so we get uh, plus six for CR, negative one for O. And here become uh, negative, uh, become like a monatomic ion against the three plus the three plus. And this is the I2 is the free element, so it's zero. Okay. Now we write uh, this equation into two parts. The first part will be this oxidation. The second part will be the reduction. Well, actually, which part you write first doesn't matter. Just write the two equations. Once you have the two equations, you balance them like um, separately. You first balance the mass, which means balance the atoms. Um, and when you balance the atom, you balance the atom that is not H and O first. So in the equation we get uh, before put these two, they are not balanced. Now we put a two here to balance the I. Uh, in this equation, it's simple. There's only one element. So once you balance the I dying, so everything is balanced in terms of mass, but the charge is not. Uh, so let's first balance the, the mass of both equations. And in this equation, so before we put these two here, we only have a CR2072 negative and a CR3 plus. So therefore, we have to put a, three, uh, put a two here to balance the CR. Uh, once you balance the atom that is not H2O, you will balance the oxygen by adding H2O. So that's why you kind of uh, you you get something to to use, but you kind of you have a lot of uh, procedure to follow. Uh, you cannot use some other some other thing to balance the oxygen. If you see there are seven oxygen on the left, you don't have any oxygen on the right. You don't use O2 or anything else. You just using H2O water. Uh, so if you're adding one water, you're getting one oxygen. Um, so we need a seven oxygen, so therefore we need a seven H2O. The state for H2O will be liquid. Okay, so now uh, in this uh, equation, so every, uh, every atom is balanced, there's only one, one element. We balance that. Now here we kind of balance the oxygen using water, but the problem is that if you use water, you are, you are adding like some of those uh, H, hydrogen. So therefore you have to balance the hydrogen by using H plus. So you identify there's a seven times two, 14 H. There is nothing on the left. So therefore we are using 14 H plus. Even though H plus does not look like H, but the, the element. Okay? So therefore you don't care, care about the, H plus or H2O in, in H2O, you see the, the, the element is H. The element is hydrogen. So therefore now in these two equations, all the atoms are balanced. Um, the problem is that to balance the oxidation reduction equation, not only you have to balance the atom, you also have to balance the, the charge. Um, so therefore we, we balance the charge by using electrons. Uh, so in the first equation here, uh, on the left, we have two negative, we have zero charge on the right. So what you do, you are adding two electrons. Each one electron and one negative. So in that way, uh, you balance the, the charge. And then for the second equation, you count in carefully uh, how many charge on the right, what is the neutral, a charge neutral. So CR three plus, you have two three plus, so we have six uh, plus. And then here, there's two negative from this ion. And then 14 plus from this 14 H plus. So therefore you have a 12 plus. And you want to reduce the 12 plus to six plus. So just using six electron. So that's good. Now these two equations at the bottom of the screen, um, for each of them, everything is balanced. The atom is balanced, the charge is balanced, the atom is balanced, the charge is balanced. So then the last step in this procedure is adding these two equations together. But before you adding them together, do one more check. 
making sure both of them have the same number of electrons. So the first equation has two electrons, the second equation has six. You want to make them have the same number, the same least number, you will multiply the first one by three, uh, which means you multiply all the coefficients. Uh, so here we have a two, one, and a two. Uh, so therefore they become like uh, two times three is six, two times one is two, two times two, uh, three times two is six. Uh, so now this is the, after we multiply the three into all the coefficients, uh, we get this new first equation. And then our second equation, we don't need to do anything. We copy here, then we add. So this six electron on the left of this arrow, this six is on the right of this arrow. What, after we add them together, so these two arrows will become one arrow. So therefore everything on the left can cancel out everything on the right. Uh, that's why we cross out the six electron on the left of the second equation which is the six electron on the right of the first equation. Now we have this. Uh, sometimes you might have something same on the left or on the right. Uh, now in this case, we don't have, have anything the same. So this is kind of our final result. But you want to check in your final result is right by, by just checking every element, checking the charge, and you can do the checking, or let's do this together. See, the first element is, is iodine. Iodine here on the left, only in this ion. So therefore we have six iodine. Uh, iodine on the right, only here in I2. We have three I2. So three times two is six. Uh, hydrogen on the left, uh, just 14 H plus. So therefore we have 14 H plus. Again, here you don't pay too much details you see H plus is same as H. So 14 H plus, then here is seven times two. So 14 H. And then the CR only here on the left, we have a CR2, which means we have two CR. Now here just clearly two CR. Again, you don't matching exactly CR3 plus and CR here, just the CR. So the oxygen, uh, on the left is in this ion, so you have seven O, and uh, on the right, the oxygen is in water, so seven water is seven O. So therefore, all the atoms are balanced. Now we check the charge. Uh, let's see the charge on the left first, so that we know this is six negative, six times negative one, six ne negative six. Negative six, and then we have the 14 plus, so uh, eight plus. Then we have two negatives, so we have six plus. All together on the left, so therefore six plus. Then on the right, what is the P, uh, charge neutral, so we have a zero charge. Uh, then each CR is three plus, so two times three plus is six plus. So therefore everything is balanced. Uh, so good or bad, uh, it's, it's guaranteed you will be able to balance the equation, but you can have to follow the procedure. And this is the procedure to balance the equation, balance the redox reaction in basic solution. So as I said, uh, everything is the same. You accept it in this step three, you are adding one more step here. Uh, because if the reaction happen in basic solution, you don't want to see the H plus, you have to add in hydroxide to turn the H plus into water. You can keep the hydroxide. And you will see what I mean. So for this uh, equation, and uh, it's a redox, and you want to balance this equation in the basic solution. So again, follow the procedure, you will rewrite this equation into two equations. One will be the uh, oxidation, the other one in the reduction. Uh, to do that, you can do that very quick, uh, but you to do that like accurately, you will assign the number first. Uh, so then again, how you sign the number, you review the, the previous few slides. So the result is here, and we can see the carbon's number increased from plus two to plus four. So therefore we know something has carbon in it has been oxidized. Uh, so therefore we write the oxidation is for this sign nine ion CN1 negative changed into this CNO1 negative. For the reduction, where we have something has uh, manganese, MA. 
because MA, uh, the number for MA decrease from plus seven to plus four. Okay, so we have these two equations and then we are gonna balance both of them, balance the air term, balance the, the charge, so when you balance the air term, you will balance the air term first, then balance the charge. When you balance the air term, you have the procedure. You balance the air term that is not O and H. Then you balance the O, then you balance the H. Okay. Um, so for this one, um, before we, uh, this highlight is in red, uh, what, are the, what are we add? Um, so before we add in this water, we know we, we have a carbon and a nitrogen, and they are both balanced. So one carbon on the left, one carbon on the right, one nitrogen on the left, one nitrogen on the right. Except there is uh, one oxygen, we don't have oxygen on the left, so therefore we're adding one water. One water is one H2O. So therefore you will have one oxygen on the left and also one uh, oxygen on the right. All right. So the so that's so that's okay. We balance the oxygen. Then later on, we will balance the hydrogen. So similar story for this um, second reaction. Before we add in these two H two O, so we know the M A in the balance. There's a one M A one M A, uh, but oxygen is not. So there are four oxygen, two oxygen. So therefore, we add in two water. Okay now. Um, the air term uh, in the balance, I mean, some of those atoms in the balance, but not the H. So to balance the H, you don't use H2 or something else, just using the H plus. So for the first equation, there are two H on the left. You are adding two H plus here. For the second equation, you will have a two times two, four H. You are adding four H plus on, on the left. So two H plus, four H plus. Now, if this reaction happens in acidic solution, then you are, you are, you are done, you're finished. But this reaction is happening in basic solution. So you don't want to keep uh, this H plus in your equation. And we are adding the right number of hydroxide. What does it mean, the right number? The right number means if you have two H plus, you are adding two hydroxide. So therefore you will produce two what? Uh, you have four H plus, you are adding a four hydroxide. So, okay, so you adding, you already have everything balanced, you adding two hydroxide on the right, you must add in two hydroxide on the left. That makes sense, right? So that will keep everything still balanced. Even though you change your solution from uh, acidic to basic, but in this way, every atom is still balanced. And then we'll do the same for this second equation. So we're adding four hydroxide and four hydroxide. Uh, okay, before we do that, uh, we know uh, H plus hydroxide together will make it work. So therefore these two, these two H plus, these two hydroxide, we can simply write as two H2O. Uh, we'll do that later. So the same for, the, for this equation. Uh, we have the four H plus, we're adding four hydroxide on the left, on the right. Now this four H plus four hydroxide will give you four water. So now we summarize what it gets so far. And uh, we still have not checked the chart yet, but uh, because we, we produce water by put uh, H plus and OH together, so therefore we can cancel out some of the water. So for the first reaction, there are two, there are two water on the right and one water on the left. So therefore one of them cancel out, the left uh, will have no more water, the right have only one water. Similarly here, so this beginning, we have two water on the right, four water on the left, so two of them cancel out, only have two left over. Okay, now kind of we clarify our equation, and then we were checking the charge. So the charge, Let's see, for this, for this chart, uh, for this first equation on the top, after we cross out the water, because the water doesn't matter, so it don't have a charge. So here is the negative one, and they have two times negative one, so you have negative three. And uh, so negative three, so this is negative two, and this is negative one. So negative one plus negative two is negative three on the left. 
Uh, so here the netting one, therefore you, you, you plus two electron to also give a negative three. That's why we put a two electron here. And uh, then the equation, the second equation, uh, you will check the charge also. So how many charge on the left? Negative one. Now how many charge on the, on the right? Four times negative one, negative four. So therefore you want to add in like a three electron on the left. All right, so now these two equations, everything in the balance, the atom in the balance on that by themselves. So now we kind of want to balance the something between them, uh, which means uh, the first equation has two electrons, the second equation has three electrons. You want to have the, the least common number for both of them. Uh, so that will be six, right? Uh, so therefore, we will multiply the first equation by three, multiply the second equation by two, and uh, we, we, we have this. What this means is uh, you will multiply every the coefficient, every coefficient uh, by this same number, for the rectangle, for the product, right? So you know those guys, those guys, we don't have a number means one, we don't have a number means one, three, two, and we call the coefficient. So you make sure you multiply every coefficient. Okay? Um, then you will say you will have the same number of electrons in both equations. So six, ele six electrons here, six electrons here, even though this is in the first equation, this is in the second equation, but when you add in that, they become one equation. So just Pay attention to the are they on the left or are they on the right? Uh, so that's pretty good. And then we can also see in this example there's also water cancel out. So I have three water here, four water here, cross out become one. And also the hydroxide. So six and eight. So eight cross out and I give you two. So now you clarify everything. Just write whatever left over. So therefore we have a three cyanide, a CMI negative, two permanganate, two MnO4 Y negative called permanganate, and water than this. In this balance, you check it, okay? Just make a list for carbon, for nitrogen, for Mn, for oxygen, for H, for charge. And um, so for carbon, there are three. Okay. Uh, coming from this three, or kind of uh, three times one. Uh, for nitrogen on the left, also three. So three here. Um, all right, so the charts probably sometimes you, you cannot see, oh, let's see, for MA, MA gets two MA here and two MA here. For oxygen, there are two of them has oxygen. What has oxygen than this? Permanganate has oxygen. So you have two times four is eight, and then you have one. So this nine comes from two times four plus one. On the on here, this nine come from three times one is three plus two times two is four, and plus two times one. So that's six plus three, also nine. So you can see here three, one, two and two and two and one. For the charge do the same. And uh, so the charge uh, here, this guy will give you negative three because that is three times negative one, right? And this count, will give you negative two because two times negative one. So therefore all together, negative three, negative two is negative five. And then on the right, so this give you like a, kind of three times negative one. And then this is the two times negative one. So again, you have negative three and negative two. So negative two, negative three together, negative five. So everything is balanced. Uh, we have the activity series. You can use it to predicting the reaction, the spontaneous or not. Um, so just memorize some of those uh, rule 
the activity series of matter leads to matter in order of decreasing tendency to lose electron. What that means is uh, the, uh, the matter on the top lost electron easier. The matter at the top of the list have the greatest tendency to lose electron, to lose electron easier. They are most easily oxidized and therefore the most reactive. The matter at the bottom of the list have the lowest tendency to lose electron. They are the most difficult to oxidize and therefore the least uh, reactive. And uh, we still keep this table here and see this uh, tendency here. Uh, so then we can use it to solve some problem. Uh, so each reaction in the activity series is an oxidation half reaction. What that means is all those reactions is written here is the oxidation because they all tell you uh, lost electron. Um, so the half reaction at the top are most likely to occur in the forward reaction. The half reaction at the bottom are most likely to occur in the reverse reaction. If we pair a half reaction from the top of the disk with the reverse of the half reaction from the bottom of the disk, we get a spontaneous reaction, which means we don't have to use any energy. Uh, the reaction will go and the reaction will go, then will give you energy. Usually you can, you can harness the energy uh, as electricity. Uh, so here is uh, one example that is spontaneous, the reaction happened between um, magnesium and copper. So we use magnesium metal, then the copper initially is the copper ion, copper two plus ion. Um, so by the natural tendency of the, the magnesium reaction will be on the top, the reverse of copper reaction will be at the bottom, so therefore this reaction is spontaneous. And uh, so therefore you put the magnesium metal in this copper solution. So gradually the, the magnesium will be lost into solution, uh, kind of eat away. And then the copper in the solution deposit on the metal. Uh, it's kind of those copper reduced to metal or copper ion reduced to metal deposit on the metal. If you do the reverse, if you use copper metal and put in a solution of Mg2 plus the solution, nothing will happen. You can make that happen by using electricity. All right, so therefore we can just use the that table to determine for a given reaction, if that reaction happens spontaneously from left to right. So for the first one, uh, you want to predict if uh, the iron solid plus, uh, uh, so plus uh, magnesium, um, two plus uh, produce uh, iron, two plus ion, then magnesium metal, is that spontaneous? Well, so the reaction involves oxidation of uh, Fe. Uh, so we have that equation. Uh, with the reverse reaction um, above in the activity, so therefore this is not spontaneous. The second part is uh, we have the reaction involved Fe. So Fe being oxidized, and which is on the top of the reverse of uh, uh, lead being reduced. So therefore we can see this reaction will be spontaneous. And uh, then one particular prediction is predicting whether metal dissolves in acid, because acid uh, is also in that table on the list. Uh, so most uh, other most acids um, dissolve metal by by the reduction of H plus ion to the hydrogen gas and the corresponding oxidation of the metal to its ion. Um, but there is one special acid. Uh, there may maybe some other acid, but with the common one special acid will be the nitric acid. Uh, so nitric acid kind of uh, even stronger. Uh, oxidize some of the metal. Um, well, let's see if we uh, we need to study that. 
to measure about H2 on the activity series dissolving acids, uh, which uh, by a measure below the H2 do not dissolve in acid. Uh, so the uh, important exception to this rule is nitric acid, which uh, through a different reduction half reaction dissolves some of the metal below H2 in the activity series. Uh, so here is one example. Uh, the metal is on the top of the H, uh, H2. Uh, so therefore, this metal, which is the zinc, it will dissolve in the usual acid like HCl uh, or HBr, or even the acetic acid. So what happens is the zinc uh, being oxidized into zinc two plus ion, and then the reverse of H two oxidized is the H plus being reduced. So therefore, we see if zinc is on top of this. Uh, reverse of this second reaction, then the reaction will happen spontaneously. And you check the activity series, that is true. And that's why you see the, the reaction here. The, the gas bubbles get the H2 gas. And uh, then this question is about, uh, does the CR, which is the chromium, dissolve in hydrochloric acid? To answer the question, we'll say is, is the chromium on top of H2? If it is, it will dissolve. Uh, otherwise, it will not. Uh, so then we can use this uh, spontaneous uh, redux reaction to make a battery called the voltaic cell. So the electrochemical cell that creates electrical current from a spontaneous reaction is called a voltaic cell. Voltaic cell or galvanic cell. So this name uh, after some scientists, uh, Waltney and Garvani. So those like 400 years ago, some of those Italian scientists uh, discovered the electricity from the muscle of a frog. So in the voltaic cell, in the next figure, the following reaction happens. Uh, so a solid strip of zinc is placed into a zinc plus ion to form the half reaction. And then the solid strip of carbon is placed into carbon two plus ion to form the second half reaction. So we know the reaction, if you put them together, they will happen together. Uh, but you don't want to have in like just directly uh, the electron go from zinc to carbon ion. You want to harness that by using those kind of device. So the device I uh, will show you in this picture. You don't insert the zinc into this solution. Otherwise, you will see the electron gets lost from zinc to the carbon ion in the solution. You want to use this natural tendency. You just separate in these two reaction in two half uh, in two beakers. Uh, so the oxidation will happen in this part, and this part uh, they call it electrode. So the electrode is kind of the terminal in your common battery. Uh, we have the anode and the cathode. So the anode is where the oxidation happens. And the cathode is the uh, electrode, the reduction happens. And then those signs for the batteries, like the anode has the negative sign uh, because the electron flow out from the anode. So the metal strip where that happens is called the cathode and has a positive sign. So this part, this part will be the positive. If your battery, so that's call your battery. Okay, so now we really harness, uh, control the, the tendency. We force the electron going out. Uh, you still want to go to the lower potential place. So therefore go kind of, you have a, a waterfall you can use the, the water for, to make a, a hydro, um, to make some of the electricity powers, but that's different story. 
So using electricity to do chemistry is kind of, uh, we want to reverse some of those reactions. Um, so at what we just say in a voltaic cell, a spontaneous electron reaction is used to produce electrical current. In electrolysis, uh, the electrical current is used to drive uh, otherwise non-spontaneous reaction, which is very useful too. So, um, an electrical chemical cell used for uh, uh, electrolysis is called the electrolytic cell. Um, so we compare or contrast the type of cell for the hydrogen system. And uh, so this is spontaneous, uh, so produce electricity. Uh, we can use this equation in a voltaic cell. Now the problem is kind of a chicken and egg. You, where you get the H2 gas? So one thing that you can get the H2 gas from the decomposition of H2. The problem that so I will be a very easy, very good way to produce uh, 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 like a, the, the energies. Um, probably we can use like a nuclear power or something to get the H2, then we use the H2 we get uh, to produce electricity or uh, to, to drive our car. But, uh, okay. Um, so here is the picture for the setting of this second reaction. Uh, you can see we use battery, use electricity to drive in the reaction and uh, you will produce these two gas. Uh, one is the uh, O2 gas, the other one is the H2 gas. You know which one is which is by using the coefficient. So we produce more H2 and only half of the O2. You can see here the, on the top, this empty place is for the gas. And um, one of the problems associated with the widespread adoption of fuel cell is the scarcity of uh, hydrogen. Uh, where the hydrogen to power to use the fuel cell is going to come from? A solar or wind power electrical cell can be used to make hydrogen from water than the sun in the shining or when the wind is blowing. So that's a good idea. You can use them in the spacecraft. Then the hydrogen can be converted back into water. And then they can drink in the water. So hydrogen made in this way probably used to power fuel cell vehicle. Another application is to do the super the plating. So we know like some of those metal is very attractive, but they are very expensive. Uh, for example, silver. Silver uh, can be oxidized um, in this setting. Um, so we uh, connecting this silver metal to the positive end of the battery, then we connect some other metal to the negative end of the battery. For example, this is like some other metal. Uh, then we were coating the other kind of cheap metal with the silver. All right, so this is the end of this uh, chapter.